Ignition sequence start. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes. Hello and welcome to your team break. Today's video is off to an interesting start as you can see as the Saturn V derived launch vehicle obliterates its launch pad. And you can see that uh, again we're at a different uh, space center than usual. This is the Kerbal Space Center extended uh, from uh, I believe it's a Tundra Space Center is the mod I'm using. And uh, yeah, this is stock Kerbin. You might be wondering why are you back in a stock solar system especially one that's not been rescaled. Well, I haven't done a Jewel 5 in my uh, over 2000 hours in KSP, so I might as well do that. Of course, I'm going to be using some mods, notably a Kerbalism, and also uh, parts mods, as you can see with the uh, Blue Dog design here with Saturn 5. I, it will still be more challenging than your average uh, Jewel 5, but yeah, I didn't feel like doing a rescal for this to make it uh, just uh, more comparable to other people's Jewel 5s. Now, this will just be a, a mission to uh, map out the uh, five moons of Jewel, and uh, to uh, scout out uh, potential landing sites, and do other activities uh, prior to the, uh, or to the uh, main crewed mission. I accidentally deployed uh, the equipment on the uh, five probes, there is a uh, one for each moon, but I was able to retract that, and uh, now we have a Hydrodonks upper stage. There is. Uh, sorry for any background noise. Yeah, Hydrodonks upper stage with uh, plenty of radiators to keep the fuel from completely evaporating by the time we reach Jewel. And since it's stock, we've already reached Orbit. And so, we're going to uh, be doing a pretty standard, uh, just a dual mission profile, inserting using a ton of gravity assist, and we're going to uh, leave the uh, main stage in orbit around Jewel, uh, whilst uh, the uh, satellites uh, go off and uh, do maneuvers to reach their target bodies. Also, I thought for some reason my footage broke there, but no, I guess there was just a long pause there. Sorry about that. As you can see, I'm plotting the maneuvers. I used a transfer window planner to plot our initial curve and escape burn, and now I'm uh, plotting some mid course corrections. Yes, to a nice uh, tiny flyby. And what I want to do is to have our tiny encounter be before our dual periapsis, as that will mean that tiny gravity will slow us down into a orbit around jewel. Except uh, I was able to make it work without doing that, that's just a general rule of thumb. And also our uh, this exact uh, profile of our uh, flyby will change as the maneuvers are, aren't going to be exact. But we can start our curve and escape burn, and you can see how the probes are stacked. Not the most realistic, but there are struts connecting all of them. And uh, this was actually a second attempt at this. First attempt, I embarrassingly uh, forgot to check that my antennas were strong, were strong enough, and so we had lost contact at Joel. And uh, well, this, this time I completely neglected to uh, show the probes themselves in any detail, which is sad because I spent tons of time putting uh, some conformal decals on them. But uh, anyways, let's uh, get back to something that's actually important. With, uh, with with me readjusting my uh, my mid course correction, so we can again get a Italo flyby. And so now we're time warping away from Kerbin. Again, I have Kerbalism, which means there's gonna be solar flares, and I forgot just how many solar flares there can be. I I didn't realize that I had launched at I believe a solar maximum. And so, yeah, there's tons of solar flares, which is gonna cause us some issues uh, later on. As Kerbin fades away into a small speck behind us, we uh, head out towards the outer solar system. And yeah, you hear that sound? It's the sound of uh, solar flares causing lost communication every few seconds at time warp. And. Uh, 
Now, well, so far it hasn't caused any issues, in fact, we have performed our mid-course correction nominally. But uh, there's gonna be some uh, issues later on. As you can see, I'm uh, getting my tunnel flyby, which will pass into elliptical but a usable uh, dual orbit. And just uh, adjusting that, uh, you will get a, a more usable orbit. Quick, quick save there. And continuing to a time warp. And so many solar flares. And then a part broke. The reaction wheel on the uh, just, uh, project upper stage. And has a broke. Which not uh, that bad. But now we've lost the antenna on one of the probes. Completely killing said probe and making it unusable. And it continues to get worse. Now another antenna has failed, we actually had already deployed it in combination with one on the main stage, so it could surface a backup in case one failed. Yeah, now just everywhere antennas are failing, and at this point I realized that uh, I had forgotten to put a antenna on one of the probes and then instead put two antennas on one of the probes, which fundamentally it means that no different, we still, we still lose one probe. Just, yeah, a bit annoying uh, that I uh, made uh, that mistake, it was, uh, basically, I don't know why a symmetry broke, specifically only on that part. Anyways, yeah, no, we've uh, just lost uh, most of our probes, which uh, means that we're not actually going to be able to survey all of the Julian moons. That's why the title and thumbnail uh, show that uh, only one probe truly made it to its destination. Now I decided that the lathe was by far the most important uh, target uh, for surveying. That's where the uh, whole probe will be going. And I actually will get the uh, main stage to do some surveying elsewhere. But finally we have reached Jewel after three years. Our battered craft is uh, finally nearing its destination. And... Uh, of course, another solar flare, it means that uh, we uh, lose communication right before a tiny flyby. However, all of this uh, trajectory has been pre-planned, so a new uh, input is needed. And after a quick lag spike, you get a, a nice close flyby of Tylo and enter into Julian orbit. And so from here I survey the damage, I actually have to deploy an antenna on one remaining probe. However, I completely forgot about that probe to be honest, and I realized now that I actually did have a second probe available. Anyways, with the one probe that I'll actually be using, I start plotting maneuvers to get it to its target of length. And I chose length for its sole target, as I really just... With how much uh, water there is on Lathe, I definitely need uh, some indication of where a suitable landing site might be. So using the Xenon RCS from Blue Dog Design Bureau, we are able to free ourselves from the uh, scaffold holding the probes, and uh, plot our own maneuvers towards Lathe. And yeah, it's a Xenon-powered craft, with uh, large solar panels to provide electricity. And yeah, I'm using combination of uh, the near future technology and Blue Dog Design Bureau parts, as well as some uh, stock parts as well. And of course it's a ion, ion engine, so uh, of, as always a long burn and low thrust weight ratio. I'll cut out most of the uh, engine burns during this. And uh, for some reason our uh, our frame of reference for orbit randomly changes, but uh, we're still able to complete our maneuver. And so we're aiming for a polar orbit around Lathe, as that's uh, where the ore scanner is uh, able to work. Of course, I'm not actually... I'm, un I'm still unsure if I'll actually uh, do any uh, mining for ore during the uh, final Jewel 5. That's a possibility with... Uh, it's a possibility. I 
And uh, one thing to note is the solar panels cannot provide enough electricity to uh, counteract uh, the electric draw of the ion engine, so uh, we are, our burns are not unlimited in length. But how that uh, does not have a significant impact, as this craft has a very pretty good uh, battery uh, storage on it, Ra battery capacity. So now we approach the uh, nice uh, blue marble that is length, and fairly soon we can perform our orbital insertion burn. And you can see I'm just uh, checking to see what parameters the scanner needs. And we start burning using uh, some physical time warp. And a nice shot there of the blue, uh, just, I would say, I was gonna say flame, but just blue uh, plume uh, from the ion engine. No, however, I failed to account for a fact that we would pass behind Lathe, which would not only block our communication, but also block our solar panels. Which leads to us uh, losing contact uh, shortly in our burn, which means that we are unable to uh, circularize. And as we begin uh, flying away from length, we are unable to uh, slow down enough to insert into orbit. And so, uh, despite uh, my uh, attempts, uh, we have to uh, do another orbit around, well, another few orbits around Jewel, and encounter length again using another uh, maneuver to uh, correct our trajectory. I'm just gonna say, I haven't done enough in the uh, gas giant uh, systems in uh, KSB, I feel like. Yes, I just, there's something so science fiction about, okay, I definitely, uh, I did not mean for that to be improper English, uh, but just, there's something so cool about uh, being able to uh, see multiple celestial bodies in one frame. I just... Uh, yeah, I want to do more stuff around the gas giants. So, uh, yeah, expect that at some point. Anyways, getting back to the moment, we, did, we are doing uh, what we did, our mid-course correction, and now we're doing our orbital insertion, which uh, this time we're approaching uh, from one of the holes, we have constant access to both a uh, line of sight with carbon and also uh, to uh, our solar panels can receive sunlight. So we're able to perform our uh, orbital insertion somewhat normally, though we do run a bit on electric charge and have to limit the uh, throttle of our ion engine. Yeah, you can see those uh, beautiful uh, scatter of clouds on lathe. And we successfully insert into orbit after a bit more burn. And. Almost. Am I going to insert into orbit? There we go. And we're going to uh, do a few more maneuvers to lower said orbit. And, for, and after our orbit is circularized. We can deploy our scanner, or just do the, or or the orbital surveyor. I don't really- Okay, I'm going to admit this, I don't do the exact names of the parts, just the ore scanning equipment. Yeah, we can start to survey length. Also, I forgot to mention this, but uh, at some point our antenna broke, but it kept working. I'm not going to question it. I should have definitely have said this sooner, but this mission is done using the uh, normal difficulty settings. So, uh, with our lathe uh, probe deployed, it's now time to uh, attempt to get the uh, main craft in orbit around time, though, since uh, none of the uh, remaining probes are able to complete uh, their missions alone. And yeah, I choose time, though, as uh, it's the uh, it's not as important to get a specific uh, landing site, but it'd still be uh, nice to uh, know where a uh, flat area on Tylo would be. As uh, as uh, you might know, Tylo has insanely high uh, gravity. And just, yeah, it has insanely high gravity, which makes uh, just, you can't really uh, do any uh, just corrections during your descent. I'm not sure if I'm truly making sense here, 
Basically, if you're going down over a, uh, if you're landing over a rough area, you're going to a tip over and your lander will be unrecoverable. Now, as we're performing maneuvers, our main engine, well, central engine, is no longer up to a task and uh, catastrophically fails. However, we still have a four engines which were shut down earlier, which we can use to perform the rest of our maneuvers towards Tylo. And I foolishly perform. I, fl I well, foolishly uh, plotted our, uh, our orbital insertion beyond the uh, dark side of Tylo, so we have to instead do this very inefficient maneuver after we return into a line of sight with Kerbin. But we do end up in a orbit of Tylo, though with a periapsis within the surface. Meaning that if a uh, solar flare were to occur right now, we would lose the craft. Yeah, however, we are able to avoid that. As you can see, I'm plotting a maneuver to raise our periapsis, which we are able to execute. Though we do lose uh, one more engine, leaving with leaving us with that with just two. Which is really just one engine, since if one fails, we are unable to use the other one. And that's exactly what happens here. And so, yeah, our craft is uh, stranded in an elliptical orbit of Tylo, unable to further adjust its orbit. And so, yeah, not the most successful mission, but uh, yeah, radiation is brutal, what can I say? Thank you for watching.